Dear brothers and sisters, there's a very famous narration where the Prophet said, the hour will not come until time shrinks, that a year will feel like a month, and a month would feel like a week, and a week would feel like a day, and a day would feel like just an hour, the hour would feel like a burning bush or like the flare of a fire. Everything goes by so quickly. You don't feel barakah in time. You don't feel blessing in your time. And I read about people that are so productive in the past and in the present. Where is the blessing in my time? And the Messenger وسلم, in another narration, also in Bukhari, he directly tied the shrinking of time to the decrease of good deeds and the increase of certain types of corruptions Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said that time would shrink and so the deeds, the output of good deeds would be less and greed, miserliness, stinginess would be placed in the hearts of people and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said and murder would become prevalent Most people do not realize the value of their time until you start to get older until your health starts to wither as well until you see some of the consequences of your wasted time later on in life and then you go back and you say subhanallah I should have done things differently and that's why the Prophet ﷺ of course mentioned that there are two blessings that people just do not take advantage of and they are health and free time so what does it mean to have barakah to have blessing in your time the technical definition to be able to do more with less time that doesn't always mean more in terms of quantity because Allah Azza wa says, لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Not أَكْثَرُ عَمَلًا That He tests you to see who will do the best with their deeds, not necessarily the most. So it's not always something that's quantifiable. But to do more with less. So I wanted to just go over seven things that I extracted from the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam about how to have barakah in your time. And the first thing is that the Prophet Wasallam was a morning person. And there's an authentic hadith from Sakhr al-Ghamidi radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Sakhr was a companion. He said, I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa saying, Allahumma barik li ummati fi bukuriha. Oh Allah, bless my nation in its early hours. And he said, I didn't just hear the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa say this, when he used to send out a battalion or an army, he always sent them at the beginning of the day. Anything he did sallallahu alayhi wa on an individual basis, and anything he commanded within the ummah, he started early in the day alayhi salatu was salam. So that's the first thing, starting early. Number two, avoiding sins and drama. And they are interconnected. Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala, when he met Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah, this amazing child who at the age of eight years old just clearly was way ahead of everybody else. He was clearly a genius. And his teacher Imam Malik rahimahullah says to him, listen to me, O young man. Inni arallaha qad alqa ala qalbi nura. I see that Allah has put a light in your heart. Don't extinguish that light with the darkness of sin. Don't mess it up with sin. So whether it's your memory, or it is as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ Had the people of the town believed, وَاتَّقَوْا Avoided sin. They feared Allah, they avoided sin. Then barakah, then the blessings of what was coming down upon them would have been present. But it was the sins that took away the blessing of what was given to them. And so sins decrease the barakah of wealth, they decrease the barakah of time, they decrease the barakah of intellect, they pollute everything that they are present within. Some of the scholars also say, and this is why I said avoiding sins and drama, there is hem al mashakil, there is the hem, the anxiety that sin causes. When you're a messy person, you get yourself into a lot of messy situations, don't you? And so you only have a certain amount of head space and a certain amount of heart space and a certain amount of time space. And if you occupy that with sins and the consequences of sins, the messiness of sins, then naturally that's going to paralyze you from being able to be productive with your time. Because you're always trying to get yourself out of a sin that you committed. They're mostly self-inflicted. The third thing, spending time with your family. You say, wait a minute, that's why I feel like my time is going. Right? I can't find time to spend with my family. I can find time to do all this other stuff, but I can't find time to spend with my family. Anas ibn Malik anhu narrates that the Prophet وسلم, said, whoever wants to be granted more wealth and have their life extended, then let them keep a good relationship with their family ties. Think to yourself, wait a minute, family pulls me away from being able to make money properly. I've got to do more in my career, and that's why I don't have time for my family. 
and the Prophet is saying that in the design of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, spending time with your family, being good to your family, actually increases the barakah of your earning and the barakah of your time. And we trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that. The fourth thing, acts of gratitude. Allah Azza wa says, Wala in shakartum, la azidannakum. If you are grateful, I will increase you. Now, la azidannakum is in regards to faith as a whole, but also in regards to the specific thing that you are showing shukur with. What does it mean to be grateful with your health? Sadaqa is a means of gratitude with wealth. It increases your wealth. And so gratitude with your time, sparing your time for service to do acts of shukur, volunteerism. Some people think, well, I can't find time for the volunteerism and doing the acts of gratitude. Allah extended the years of Dawood alayhi salam. I'malu ala Dawood shukra who worked acts of gratitude. And it extends his life alayhi salam. And so a person should always have some notion of sadaqah with their time. Volunteering your time for something good in an act of gratitude will actually bless your time as well. Number five, a daily recitation of the Quran, specifically Surah Al-Baqarah. The Prophet said in authentic hadith, possess, recite Surah Al-Baqarah. When you do so, you are unlocking all sorts of barakah. And to abandon it is a form of regret. And it cannot be penetrated or overcome by al-batala. Batala can be as, as neutral as laziness and as nefarious as sihr, as sorcery and magicians. And so the scholars say in regards to waqt here, in regards to time here, the longest surah of the Qur'an is al-Baqarah. You read it, the blessing that it unlocks in your life is significant. And so there is a general rule here that if a person has a daily recitation of the Qur'an, it will increase the blessing of their time. And specifically, of course, here, Surah Al-Baqarah that has been given to us. Number six, incorporating remembrance into your routine. And that will increase what you earn in the hereafter as well as what you bless in this life. The last thing, dear brothers and sisters, keep the company of productive people. And there is a, a story I'll end with here. It's a story of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma. One of my favorite stories of a young man who had a vision. It was very traumatic for him when the Prophet ﷺ passed away. But he also had an eye and he had a heart that was looking for the pleasure of Allah. So when everyone came back to Medina, after the death of the Prophet ﷺ, all these Sahaba that had gone on journeys were all there in Medina, tells his friends, 13-year-old friend, 13-year-old Ibn Abbas. He says, hey, the Ashab, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ are everywhere today. Let's go seek knowledge from them. And his friend is narrating the incident. He says that, I told him, you know, you go ahead and do that. I'm going to keep playing and, you know, and relaxing. Let's go play with the pigeons instead. Ibn Abbas says, فَتَرَكْتُهُ He said, I let him go. I left him. I went and I started to sleep on the doorsteps of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Collect a hadith, collect fiqh, their knowledge, their jurisprudence. Years later, they've grown up and that man is walking by and he's still playing with the pigeons as an adult. And Ibn Abbas anhuma's house has become the first university in the history of Islam. Saying, you know, that young man knew better than I did. He got it. It clicked. Keep the company of productive people. Keep the company of people that are goal-oriented. Keep the company of people that are trying to get ahead. Work with them together. We are all in loss, except for those of us who enjoin one another, push one another towards the truth, push one another towards enjoining good and forbidding evil and patience and prosperity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in our lives, barakah in our time, barakah in our risk, in our sustenance, barakah in our deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow that barakah to be embedded with his rida, to be embedded with his pleasure with us until we meet him and we enter into paradise in the company of his beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma ameen.